was doing fine without shit. Yeah, I don't know the lyrics. I need to get started on the video. Ladies and G words, welcome back to my main channel. If you don't know, we have a second channel here. Unfortunately, but fortunately for you, I go through a lot. I'm like a wise old woman accumulating knowledge at the speed of light. Knowledge! To help you, the audience at home, not make these mistakes. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm in a lot of pain. The only thing bringing me happiness in life is knowing that I have free will. I'm kidding guys, I am very happy, mashallah. So, let's get started. These are, I think, 40 plus things that I want you to know. Things that I wish I knew earlier. Number one, do not let people put labels on you. What does this mean? So when I was younger in university and I was 18, I didn't know who I was. Basically, how my friends and people would describe me I took on that label and I would start to think of myself in that way, even though that was not me at all. And because when you're young and you haven't begun your process or journey of self-discovery yet, if you accept these labels, it actually inhibits your growth a lot. So it wasn't until I think I was a little bit older, I stopped identifying with these labels and then I started this self-discovery journey. But yeah, I think the moment people put labels on you, you're limiting yourself. Number two, you don't need to know the next 10 steps. You only need to know the next step in front of you, which means you only need to put one foot forward in front of the other. You don't think about like how many steps it's going to take to get to, you know, the kitchen, for example. You just put one foot forward in front of the other, which means you keep on moving. All you need to do in life is keep on moving towards your goals. No matter how much you try to avoid pain, you will get pain. Sometimes in life, it's actually worth going through pain. For example, maybe you've been really hurt in a past relationship and because of that, you run away from love or attachment or something that could be really beautiful and also cause a lot of pain at the same time. You run away from it. But inevitably, that pain is gonna catch up to you, whether it's the pain of that thing eventually fizzling out, but you still had that beautiful experience, or it's the pain of not having it and not having experienced it you will experience pain either way. And that can lead into another point. You know, on my other channel, we talk about attachment a lot. And you see a lot of videos now, like how to not be attached to someone and da 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 da. Attachment is inevitable when you let your guard down and you become vulnerable. And in order to have love and intimacy and build a healthy relationship, you do need to let that guard down, which means inevitably you're gonna form that attachment bond. And the moment that happens, Walking away is so hard. And I know because it happened to me recently and I was just thinking to myself, like Simone, I can't believe after everything you know about attachment, everything we have learnt, it feels the exact same way. And you know why? Because chemicals in our brain do not lie. Attachment is real and we can't stop it once you're vulnerable and it doesn't get easier. I thought, hey, it's gonna be so easy to walk away this time with everything I know. No, the moment that bond is there, hard to walk away and it never gets easier. This can lead to another point, but never make decisions when you are highly emotional. And women, if we are PMSing, we're near our period, don't make decisions then. So take some time for yourself. Do not trust your thoughts when you are PMSing or when you are emotional, because ultimately when you are yourself again, you may regret what you did when you were PMSing or you were emotional. That can lead to another point always, Say less, okay? So if you find yourself typing out that paragraph, ready to send it, don't send it. Especially if you're emotional. Write it out, keep it in your notes, and then a few days later, think about it, okay? If you really want to send it, send it. There's a lot of talk about like, should I give them a piece of my mind or should I just exit? Here's the thing. If you exit silently and they care about you, you will cause them pain, they will overthink, okay? But they will never know what's on your mind, okay? Now, if you wanna give them a piece of your mind and have that freedom and also relief within yourself, then I would say send it. But do it when you've thought about it and you're emotionally stable. Rejection is redirection. Man's rejection is God's protection. Remember that. There will be so many clear signs when God or the universe doesn't want you to do that thing, doesn't want you to be with that person. I'm coming out with a second channel video on this tomorrow, so stay tuned. You're going to change your career a lot. So when I was in high school, 
I was trying to figure out like my perfect career, trying to combine all of my interests together. I wanted to be in fashion, yet I wanted to be in tech, yet I wanted to be like a lawyer and like all these things. And all I want to say is things work out the way they're meant to. One thing will always lead to another and more doors are going to open and you're likely going to change career many, many times. The degree you have right now may not lead to the job you intend to have. You might be in a computer science degree and end up in a completely other job. You're probably going to fail at most things, but failing is better than regret and it's better than than never having tried. Failure is what builds the path to success. So fall down seven times, what the fuck? Fall seven times, stand up eight. I'm like a, a walking motivational book right now. I literally want to die instead of fail. Die. I don't know how to live in life. I do not know how to live in life. Live in life. With that you should take defeat personally, period. So growing up, I always thought I had to leave Australia. I didn't like it. I'm not happy here. And I moved country and I traveled a lot, you know, looking for a new home. And I want to say that the sense of having a home, it doesn't come from actually moving country. It comes from the life you build there. So when I moved to Dubai, it did not feel like my home. And I kept leaving, like I kept traveling and like escaping. This time I came back to Dubai, I was like, I'm gonna stay here for at least two months, three months. Guess what? Feels like a home now because I made friends. I have a life here. I, I know things around here now that make it feel like a home. So home is not about the city you're in. It is about the life you build. You can be in like the tiniest town in the world with, with nothing to do, but you have great friends there and they're gonna make that place feel like a home. Which yeah, it can lead to another point. Pick your friends wisely. But the friendship choices you make are as important as the relationship choices we make. So we often don't hold our friends to a higher standard. Yet, you know, with romantic partners, it's like, okay, one red flag, you're gone. But your friend can exhibit so many red flags and we just kind of ignore it. But ultimately, if that person is in your life a lot, you better hold them to a high standard or distance them at least. Which can lead to another point, like I don't really burn bridges ever. You never know when that person is going to be useful, especially in business, okay? So don't burn bridges. Be very careful about how you end things. Money can actually solve a lot of things. And while it doesn't buy you happiness, it can buy you the things that make you happy indirectly, like experiences. I had this huge realization when I went to New Zealand. By the way, I watched the New Zealand vlog here and I was with my best friend and we were just in the mountains. And I was like, wow, this is what living is. This is, this is happiness. This is freedom. This is what life is about. But guess what? Money bought that experience for me. Is money everything? No. Is money a necessity? Yes. And to that I say, focus on building more skills, which is going to help you to earn more money then. Instead of focusing on random things, and you can watch the Game of Life video for that. You can't change a person. And if a person really loves you, and they want to be with you, they will change without you having to say anything. In the past, I would find it hard to walk away from people if I saw potential in them, which is wrong like never date for potential okay i say that a lot in my videos but i think women especially because we're so nurturing we're like oh maybe i can like help foster this person to be like their best self and like give that to me but ultimately we can't do that that man he will change if he wants to change and whatever he doesn't do there's going to be another man that's going to give that to you and i talk about manifestation and self-concept work a lot of manifestation coaches they preach like changing your self-concept and how you see yourself in order to change your significant other to treat you how you want to be treated but i think honestly like just get a new person it is much easier and it shouldn't be that hard it really shouldn't be. And you only want that person so badly and you want it to be them because you're so attached. And that can go back to a previous point. You should never like trust your emotions. If you're in that emotional state, you're not thinking clearly. If you're attached, you're not thinking clearly. Everything comes full circle, so be careful. If you talk shit about someone else, it will come back to you. If you wish ill upon someone, it will come back to you. Whatever you want in life, you're going to get it. It's just a matter of when, but you're going to get it. So don't waste time 
dreaming about having that thing because it's taking away from the present moment. A couple of years ago, if you were watching me in 2021, um, during COVID, I was obsessed with Europe. OG Samo Squared followers know this, obsessed with Europe. And like all my videos, I would talk about it and I would go to bed and like dream about being in Europe. And then I went to Europe. It like, it didn't feel like anything because I had already lived it in my imagination. One, two, I spent every day yearning for it that when I actually went, it just, it really was just like, okay, like this is my life, I guess. And now I go to Europe every year. And I'm so blessed and lucky that that's my life. But ultimately it was inevitable. It was going to happen. But I wish in hindsight, I stayed in the present moment and I just knew it was going to come versus wishing for it every day. Whatever you want, you're going to get. So don't spend time like dreaming of it because you're going to get it. And we only have the present moment. So take comfort in knowing you're gonna get whatever you want, okay? If you're putting one step in front of the other, if you're putting one foot in front of the other and walking towards that goal. So there's a lot of talk about healing, right? And sometimes we actually can't heal alone. So I know for me, I thought I was like completely healed until I nearly got into a relationship again. And suddenly, oh my God, all of these traumas started to come up that I thought I didn't have. And then I was able to heal in that relationship because that's when you make the decisions. For example, if you're like avoidant attachment and you wanna run from someone, you can't actually do that alone. Like you need to be in that relationship or nearly in that relationship for that person to trigger you so that you can then say to yourself, I'm not going to run. I'm actually going to like communicate with this person more and stay and like try to fix my attachment style. So yeah, a lot of healing is done with other people because we need that trigger. That can lead to another point. Like everyone has trauma. Everyone is unavoidable. And you know why? Because our parents are not perfect and we can't, hold our parents to such a high standard because it is their first time on earth as well. I don't know what your parents are like. If you have abusive, like crazy parents, of course, it's very different for you. But I think in the majority of cases, our parents, they're just doing the best they can do. And life is too short to hold grudges, so be forgiving. Not everyone is meant to be in our life for a long time. A lot of people are karmic and karmic partners and friendships, they come into our life to teach us a lesson so we can then learn that lesson ultimately and move on and create something better for ourselves but when we hold on to karmic people we're just hurting ourselves more now how do you know if someone's karmic well you usually bond very quickly and then things turn sour very fast as well and you also have this sense of knowing that they're meant to be in your life and it will be so difficult to let go of them but you know deep down you need to let go those people are karmic and you'll find that once you let go of a karmic person, you will never see them again. Because we talk about full circle moments. If someone is not done with you, like your karma is not finished with them, you will see them in the street, they will pop up here and there, but when they're karmic and you've exited that connection, they will not pop up again. My ex, he was karmic. I've never even seen him. And I tell you, the connections I have in my life. Well, I could be in Rome and I met someone in like um Sydney and I will bump into them in Rome. And it will happen multiple times until we start this connection. You teach people how to treat you by how you treat yourself. So if you treat yourself really badly, how do you expect to be treated like a princess, like a queen? Because you're a joker, you know? And that person can see that. And I talk about this Birkin bag analogy a lot. But Rory Gilmore, when Logan gave her that Birkin and she was like, the fuck is this? Like, I don't care. Like, oh, cute, like bag. And he goes, Rory, that is a broken bag. And she didn't care. But you know, if you gave that to Lily Vander Woodson, who knows the value of a Birkin, like Logan didn't need to say anything. Like she already knew. So we can't make someone see our value. And ultimately it is not our job to prove our value and our worth to someone. And yeah, because words are meaningless. You can't go, do you know how much I'm worth? They don't care. They don't care. Like, just do it. Time will pass anyway. Whatever you're thinking about doing, you're wasting time pondering doing it. Like, just do it. The time is going to pass. Just freaking do it. Take the first step, okay? Leap and the net will form. You can't please everyone. Not everyone will like you. It's not also your job to make everyone like you. And also not everyone is entitled to like you. And often when people don't like you and you haven't done anything to, like, objectively wrong to them it can simply be like they're they're projecting their own insecurities we are so lucky to be alive and to experience the full range of human emotions yesterday i was really sad about something 
But then I was thinking, I am so lucky to be alive and to experience this emotion, this sadness right now, actually. Like, how lucky am I? And I think when we shift our perspective like that, life just seems a lot better. Like, imagine you died and you're coming back and you're experiencing the world for the first time again. How lucky are you to be able to experience all these emotions? It means you're living that fulfilled life. That's not to say like you are sad all the time, like be happy about that, then that's of course an issue. But we're alive and we're experiencing things and if you're in pain, that pain is ultimately gonna pass and you're going to be okay, okay? No matter how bad your situation is, how dire it is, you're going to be okay. You know, if you're going through a breakup, you are fine before them. You're gonna be fine after them. If you lost your job, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna find a new job. There is always something better around the corner. Man's rejection is God's protection. And also rejection is redirection. People respond to actions, not words. And we've talked about this in the past and earlier in the video, but look, if someone's not treating you right, it's better to just walk away. Like you can say something once and if they keep on doing it, just walk away. Okay, or go silent. Everything is an investment, which means if you're paying for therapy, if you're paying for that personal trainer, it is an investment and it's worth it. It can go down to the quality of your food as well. Do you wanna buy that yogurt that's a few dollars less? but has like terrible ingredients in it or do you want to buy the healthy yogurt <laughs> that's like better for you? Ultimately, the more expensive one is going to cause you less issues in the future. A great example is actually your bedding. So if you buy that cheap mattress, ooh, you're going to have health problems in the future, bad back, etc. And versus if you spend a couple of hundred dollars more on the better quality mattress, your quality of sleep is going to improve your daily life will improve, you'll be happier, you, you won't have back pain. So everything is an investment, okay? Always buy the more expensive product. Grades don't matter as much as you think it does, especially in a world where now people are not getting jobs necessarily based on their grades now. It really depends on the field, but there are so many different ways to go about getting that job now. Your grades don't matter as much. So if you fail that exam, it's not like the end of the world, but always do your best. The grass is not always greener on the other side. It's an illusion. And also the grass is green where we water and fertilize it. So those relationships that are flourishing that you see online is because two people every day are watering each other and fertilizing one another. And certainly there are times where it's easier for the grass to grow <laughs> in in certain conditions for example for me to get to where i want to go it's better for me to be in like dubai or a bigger city than in australia where there's less opportunity so yeah the grass is greener here but there's always going to be something you miss so like yeah when i moved to dubai like oh grass is greener here there's so much i miss about australia so another point the grass isn't always actually greener maybe your eyesight's bad and do you know what that means? What you should take away from it? Water the fucking grass you have. Fertilize the grass you have and it will grow and it will flourish, okay? And also winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners. So stop looking at other people's grass and look at your own for a change. You always know the answer. You just don't want to acknowledge it. When we go and we ask our friends for advice or you watch YouTube videos for advice or your therapist and you want someone else to make the decision for you, you don't know what to do, you know. Because when that person tells you the advice and you reject it, it's because they're not saying what you want them to say. You know deep down what you want them to say to you. You just want someone else to reaffirm and acknowledge it. We know the answer. We just need to go inwards. Another point, live by the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the work is gonna get 80% of the results. Watch my game of life video. Your life will not go as planned. And we can't plan everything out because things are gonna happen along the way. Time goes faster as you get older. Like this is a real thing. Look at that. Scary. Save at the moment, live in the present. Live by your values. Figure out what your values are. And if you don't know your values, you're going to, you're not gonna be very happy. For example, my values are when you're stressed, we need to let it out. When you're emotional, you need to let it out. So start writing, just journal it out. And you'll find that sometimes the problem is a lot smaller than we originally thought it was. We just need to let it out. If you keep everything in you, that's not healthy, number one. And two, you're not gonna have clarity 
on the situation. So write everything out. And also our memory can be really bad. Memory is fallible. We create false memories as well, which is why it's important to also keep that journal. I write absolutely everything out because I know I'm going to forget and my mind is going to warp the story a lot. And I especially like, for example, if someone does something to you and you know you might forget, write about what they did in detail, how they made you feel, so that in the future you can go back and read it and be like oh my god i forgot how bad they made me feel because for example like say an ex did something to you and you were like crying and you felt so bad and when they came back you're so overwhelmed and happy that they came back and you're like what they did in the past wasn't that bad hey pull out that journal and you're gonna see oh my god i was like i was crying i felt so bad and you can relive that experience and remember what they did life hack by me Thank you for watching this guys don't forget new second channel video out tomorrow go follow me don't forget to turn on post notifications like this video leave a comment below and i will see you next time ich liebe dich tschüss Give me call mark, my dream on the one that make me happy and blue. Norman Rockwell, no high under alcohol. It's just me and you. Oh, come to my office. It's you and me. I'm sure you never kiss. So now they think you're in the eye like a fire. That's the sun fades away. You think you can say, you're right. I told me you didn't work. Work in me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now I'm back in tears. Oh, yeah. Over and over, honey. Over and over, honey. Over and over, honey. You are my lovey. Jealous, I can love. If you are my lovey. Jealous, I can love. You are my lovey. Jealous, I can love.